Welcome back, MTN Giants podcast. So in this video, we're going to talk about are the Giants all in for the 2023 season in the wake of the Daniel Jones extension and Saquon Barkley getting franchise tagged. So to me, it's it's probably a yes, because I can't think of a time when a quarterback gets extended and the team is kind of just going for a rebuild still. I mean, look at some of the biggest contracts around the league. We're going to have Mahomes with the Chiefs. They're trying to win. Josh Allen with the Bills. They're trying to win. Russell Wilson with the Broncos. They were trying to win. Kyler Murray in uh, 2022. They were coming off a season where I think they had 11 wins, just went to the playoffs. They were still trying to win. Deshaun Watson with the Browns, obviously. They went 11-5 and in 2020. They were trying to win with Deshaun Watson. Dak Prescott, same thing. Stafford and the Rams obviously went to the Super Bowl and won. Aaron Rodgers are trying to win. So, I mean, all these big contracts for quarterbacks – These teams are trying to win. And when the Giants extended Daniel Jones, you kind of saw that I think they sped up their process with the rebuild. I thought the Giants were going to have another year or two, probably just a year, of actually rebuilding. But now that you extended Daniel Jones, you have him on a lower cap hit this year for $19 million. This feels like your chance to kind of go all in for this year. And there might be some one-year deals included. You may have to extend guys like Leonard Williams to, you know, create more cap space. Now, right now, according to a tweet by, I believe it was Dan Duggan, the Giants now have $14.2 million in cap space, not including Kenny Galladay's $6 million that will be freed up in the uh, the new year for the league, which I think is like March 15th or something, so it's coming up soon. So the Giants will have around $20 million in cap space once the Galladay cut officially goes through. And $20 million, we know like 10 or 11 of that million goes to your free agency, or not free agency, it goes to your draft class. So how much can the Giants really maneuver with here? I mean, it could get dangerous. Of course, cap goes up every year. That's going to help out a lot. But the Giants are in a situation now where do you go all in for this year and try to push money down the road, which I think is something Joe Shane does not want to do. And we've seen Dave Gettleman do it. And that's why, you know, Leonard Williams has the massive cap hit that he does and things like that. So do the Giants want to play that game and try to go all in for this 2023 season? Or do they kind of be, are they more conservative? And I know Joe Shane had that quote about they're not going to go for these lower class free agents anymore and I don't know if that was taken out of context or not but there are a lot of good free agents out there teams are releasing guys that are good players we saw Eric Kendricks and Adam Thielen get released from the Vikings we'll touch on that type of stuff and talk about some of the other rumors like Odell Beckham he had a tryout in Arizona or just a showing I guess you want to call it but the Giants were there along with many other teams the possibility of DeAndre Hopkins being a giant I guess we'll touch on that Bears Panthers trade that was big as well and some other guys that have kind of been linked or rumored to the Giants in this offseason so we'll talk about all that hope you guys enjoy and let's get into it so let's start with Odell Beckham of course if you know me he's one of my favorite Giants of my lifetime that I've watched and uh, Um, Odell now is 30 years old. There was a report that he's still seeking some top dollar. He's not going to go for some cheap contract and give the Giants some type of discount. The man still wants money. We respect that, of course. But 2020, he tore his ACL. That was the first time. Of course, he had that big injury in 2017 with the Giants, the fractured ankle, I believe it was. 2020, torn ACL, only played seven games. Came back for 2021, had that weird season where he bounced around with Cleveland and the Rams. And Odell in a Rams uniform played very well. He had seven games started. He had 27 receptions, over 300 yards, five touchdowns. And then you go to the playoffs of 2021. He played in four games, had 21 catches, 288 yards, and two touchdowns. And didn't even play the last three quarters of the Super Bowl because he tore his ACL again in the 2021 Super Bowl with the Rams. But the last time we saw Odell play, he was very good. Like, he was... I would say like probably a lower tier wide receiver one, you can argue, definitely a high end wide receiver two at worst. So Odell was still that guy. I mean, he wasn't the same 2014, 2015, 2016 guy, but he was still very good with the Rams. Now coming off back to back ACL surgeries in like a span of two and a half years or whatever, that is concerning. But I think the argument for why you would take Odell over a DeAndre Hopkins is because Odell is only going to cost you money. DeAndre Hopkins will cost you draft assets and possibly a player in a trade. Like, it's going to be a trade for Hopkins, and Odell's a free agent. That's that's the one big thing like between these guys that's, that's the big difference. I would rather have Hopkins in a vacuum. I think Hopkins 
has a better history, you know, with injuries. Of course, he got suspended last year, but that's not really part of injuries. I don't, I don't think that at least. I think Hopkins has had more of a proven track record. I think Hopkins will probably age more gracefully because I think he's more of a technician. Odell, of course, relies a lot on explosiveness, and Odell is a great a route runner too. So I do think Odell can be effective into his mid thirties if he plays that long. But still, I think DeAndre Hopkins is the better bet for like a guy going forward. But Odell's only going to cost you money. Uh, we know him and Saquon are very close. He never played with Daniel Jones. They missed each other by like a month or month and a half, whatever it was. I think Odell got traded in like March and um, Daniel got drafted in late April that same year. So they didn't play with each other. But of course, Sterling Shepard played with Odell if they come back, if they bring Shepard back. So you get Shepard, Odell, Barkley. That'd be pretty cool. And I'm sure in his heart, Odell wants to be here. I do think this is where he would like to be. Um, I do think he enjoyed his time in Los Angeles, too. He was pretty outspoken about not loving Cleveland, saying the Giants sent him here to die. Um, I don't see him doing that again. But I think somewhere like L.A. or, you know, possibly the Giants, I think that's definitely possible. I mean, I know the Jets can definitely afford him because they right now have the cap space, but that's before they possibly trade for Aaron Rodgers. So I can't really say anything about that now. But um, if you're the Giants, I would give Odell an offer. I don't know what I would offer him. I think he's probably looking for... I have no idea. Probably like two years. I mean, looking at PFF, they have like a projected contract for Odell. They have it as three years, $11 million per year. So, of course, that's three years, 33 mil. That might be a bit too much. I mean, if you can get out of that after two years, I'm kind of fine with that. But still, that is a lot of money. So... Then you go over to DeAndre Hopkins' contract. Now, Jordan Ronan did say that the Giants are not connected to DeAndre Hopkins, so I might be talking out of my ass here, but I do want to touch on every possible avenue the Giants can possibly trade for a wide receiver, and of course, D-Hop is always brought up in that conversation. So... Hopkins will be, I think, 31 by the time next year starts. Um, he has a $30.7 million cap hit. And the next year, in 2024, it's $26 million. If you get out of it, you save $15 million. So it's not like the worst. So, But taking on a $30 million cap hit for the Giants next year, that's a lot of money. Then, of course, 26 the next year. So that's the type of contract that I think a team with a rookie quarterback should be going after. If I was a team like the Jaguars, maybe, or something like that, I'd probably be looking more towards a DeAndre Hopkins. I think maybe... If the Bengals were to trade T. Higgins, I think they can probably flip a pick for DeAndre Hopkins and try to replace him before Joe Burrow gets his extension. That might be a good idea. So basically, if you have a rookie quarterback contract on your team right now, DeAndre Hopkins is probably a smarter avenue for a team like that. The Giants, of course, don't have that anymore because Jones has been extended. But I don't know. If they can get out of that contract after 2023, they might be able to afford it. But DeAndre Hopkins, it kind of seems like a long shot with the Giants, so I'm not expecting that. But Odell does seem more realistic, I will say that. There was a report by Jordan Schultz, I believe, yesterday or maybe two days ago that Paris Campbell, the receiver for the Colts, has a healthy trade market. Now, Campbell is interesting. Receiver out of Ohio State, he's been in the league now for, I think, four years, and he's had a ton of injuries. I mean, looking back at his games played, and I'll go look real quick, he played in uh, seven games as a rookie, two games in 2020, six games in 2021, and then he played in all 17 last year, so a very convenient time in a contract year, of course, to play in every game. Um, he had 63 catches on 91 targets, 623 yards, three touchdowns, 9.9 .9 yards per reception. He was a pretty good player for them last year. Of course, the Colts had a less than ideal quarterback situation with Matt Ryan and Sam Ellinger and even Nick Foles for a bit it was pretty rough there but Matt Ryan did have some uh, you know a bit of a connection with Paris Campbell but I think Matt Ryan's time with the Colts is most likely done and possibly the NFL we'll see what happens with him but for the injury history with Paris Campbell it's not what you want to see of course Paris Campbell has had you know abdomen muscle strain a hand fracture a foot fracture concussion MCL sprain, PCL sprain, another abdomen injury in 2021, and then a foot sprain that cost him the rest of the season in 2021 after playing in the first six games. So yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a gamble. He's six feet tall. I would think more of a slot guy. I think he has played outside before. He can make big plays, but if I'm the Giants, I'm probably not looking to make a move like this because like this team does not have the best luck with injuries. I think we know that already. So 
if I'm the Giants, if I'm going to take a shot on a a receiver with an injury history, I'd much rather take a shot on Odell Beckham than Paris Campbell. Of course, Paris is five years younger. That's going to help, of course. But I think Odell is still the better player if he's healthy. So I would take a shot on Odell and not Paris Campbell. At least with Odell, like it's been three big injuries. It seems like Paris Campbell is the type of guy who you can label as injury prone because he has a bunch of those smaller injuries. Of course, like, you know, a foot fracture is not something that's small, but you get the point. There's a lot of sprains and strains and that type of stuff. At least with Odell, it was two ACL tears and a fractured ankle. And I think he may have played through a sports hernia back in 2020. Was it 2019? Yeah, 2019, I think it was, but he played in every game. So um, at least with Odell, it's like, big injuries not like these uh injury prone type things i mean yeah odell's still injury prone but you get the point i've seen the idea of adam thielen brought up with the giants and personally i'm not a fan of it i tweeted about that yesterday it just kind of has like kyle rudolph written all over it it kind of has like you know some kenny galladay vibes to it it won't cost that much money obviously i mean thielen's now 32 years old and he's been declining ever since 2019. The man has been declining. It's just the truth. I mean, he had a great 2017, a great, even better 2018 with 1,300 receiving yards and nine touchdowns on 113 grabs. But ever since 2018, Thielen has not been the same guy. Played in 10 games in 19, played 15 and 20, played 13 games in 21, then played in all 17 this past year. Now, this past year, he had 70 catches, 716 yards, six touchdowns. I was a big feeling guy for fantasy football purposes this past year, and he was okay, but I definitely expected more. So he's a guy who his yards per reception has been declining every year since 2019. And that is definitely concerning to me. So I would not take a shot on Thielen if I were the Giants. He does not seem like much of a separator at this point in his career. Obviously, he's still a good red zone threat. I mean, he's had 14, 10, 6 touchdowns, even 9 touchdowns back in uh, 2019. So, you know, basically his entire career from 2018 on, he's been great in the uh, red zone. He's had over 6 touchdowns every year. He's had double-digit touchdowns in two of those five seasons. But Thielen's not a guy that I'm looking at if I'm the Giants. I'm definitely looking for more youth. Uh, Thielen is 6'2", that's nice, but still, I think he's kind of past his prime at this point. Not kind of, he definitely is past his prime at this point. I don't think the Giants are a good um, location for Adam Thielen. And to go down the rest of this list, I mean, you have Jacoby Myers. I would think he goes back to the Patriots, but I'm not exactly sure. Juju Smith-Schuster, I don't think the Giants will do that. I'd be surprised. Michael Thomas, I've heard that name before. I mean, I don't know. It's another guy who barely plays due to injury. He came back last year and looked very good the first, I don't know how many games he played. I think he scored two touchdowns in week one versus the Falcons, I remember. But ever since then, he just was not that great and he got hurt anyway. Oh, yeah, last year he only played in three games. Yeah, three games, 16 receptions, 171 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, that was pretty good for three games. But um, the man has not played in over seven games since 2019. Of course, back in 20, um, 2019, he set the record for most catches ever in a season, 149, had 1,700 yards, nine touchdowns with Drew Brees, 107 yards per game. He was amazing. Like 2019, Michael Thomas is probably not going to be replicated for a long time. That was pretty impressive what he did. Even 2018 was very good. Honestly, his first four years in the NFL were awesome. So he has not been the same guy, though. He missed the entire 21 season. He missed half of 2020. He missed basically three quarters or more of the 2022 season. If you guaranteed me a healthy Michael Thomas, yeah, I'd be interested, but I just can't really bet on that right now. I think a team out there that can take a shot on more risk, will go for a Michael Thomas. The Giants can't really afford to throw, you know, $10, $12 million at Michael Thomas and have him get hurt and miss, like, the entire season. You cannot have that if you're the Giants. Um, DJ Chark is a guy I'm a fan of. I've been saying that for a while. I would love DJ Chark as a Giant. He's 26 years old. And he had a really good year with the Jaguars a couple years ago. I know he's had some small injuries ever since. But DJ Chark is actually a receiver that I think would fit in pretty well here. He's 6'4", 198 pounds. This past year with the Lions, played in 11 games. He had 30 catches for 502 yards, three touchdowns. He is a big play receiver. He can play on the outside. He did have 1,000 yards back in 2019 with Jacksonville. I don't know who their quarterback was at that point. Was it a Garner Minshew, I guess? I don't know. But yeah, DJ Chark has shown it before. He is still a pretty good receiver. So 
if I'm the Giants, he's a guy I'm looking at. I don't know if they're actually going to do it or not because I have not seen any actual report about it. Alan Lazard is out there, former Packer. Well, I guess current Packer, but we'll see where he goes. 27 years old. More of an outside guy, but he does play the slot as well. He is six foot five, two 227 pounds, so that man is kind of built like a tight end in a way, but I don't think Lazard is the type of guy the Giants are looking for. I know that Joe Shane always talks about separators and you know, I don't think Lazar really fits that mold. I've seen Lazar get a lot of 50-50 balls and back shoulder passes with Rodgers and the Packers, so I don't know if that's the type of guy the Giants want to go after. Miko Hardman, that's an interesting one. Um, his projected contract is three years, $7.5 million per year. I mean, Hardman's had his moments. He's had some like, like stretches with the Chiefs where he was really good, but it's never consistent. He either gets hurt or kind of just like falls back in the death chart. Um, so yeah, I mean, Hardman, I'd be interested in. He He's a guy that would definitely get me excited because he's still just 24. He'll be 25 next year. Um, yeah, if the Giants think it could work, I'm fine with it. You can run some you know, reverse handoffs to him. Like, he's an exciting player. So, I mean, I would definitely take a shot if it's a reasonable price. We saw Robert Woods get signed, so that's not going to happen. You have some other, you know, lower tier of guys, Aguilar, Sherfield, Randall Cobb, Matt Collins. Matt Collins is actually kind of interesting, but I don't think the Giants will go that route. Uh, Marvin Jones, I mean, he's kind of past his prime as well. Sterling Shepard's still here. Zacchaeus with the Falcons is a big play guy, kind of interesting, 25 years old. He can stretch the field, so that's a maybe. You have Julio Jones, that's not going to happen. Jarvis Landry. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the Giants, like the best bet for them would be uh, going after a guy like a DJ Chark or even an Odell Beckham. Of course, Miko Hardman, it's another interesting name. They could bring back Darius Slayton. I have no idea. But with all the complaints about weapons the past couple years, like, do you really want to bring back Slayton? I mean, I'm fine with it. Slayton's a fine receiver, but I think you'd rather shoot for someone better. You know, that's no offense to Darius Slayton, but there are better receivers. I think that, you know, a guy like Odell and a guy like Chark, they're better better players than Darius Slayton. That's just the, the truth. I saw that Leonard Floyd got released. I mean, that's the guy the Giants have been trying to get ever since he was, you know, still at Georgia. I think he went to Georgia, right? I could be wrong. I want to look it up real quickly. But I do believe coming out of college that the Giants really wanted Leonard Floyd. And that was back when Jerry Reese was the GM and it was leaky. Yeah, it was Georgia. Um, it was it was kind of leaked that the Giants were all in on Leonard Floyd. And I think the Bears traded up in front of the Giants and they, they stole him from us. And we were stuck with Eli Apple. And it's not like Leonard Floyd's had a Hall of Fame career, but he's been a pretty good player. He's been, you know, he's had some really good seasons. He's had some kind of down seasons for his standards, but I would say for his entire career, he's been a much better player than Eli Apple. I mean, back in 2020, this man had 10 and a half sacks. He had nine and a half in 2021. He had nine last year. So he's been playing well, but that's with the Rams. You had Aaron Donald. I think you had Michael Brockers and other good edge rushers on that team. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Leonard Floyd is, is fine. I would like to have him. But once again, I think there are bigger needs. You still have um, you still have Kayvon Thibodeau. You still have Aziz Ojolari. I don't think Leonard Floyd's the biggest need right now. I know that rotational pass rushers are nice to have. It's big to have in this league. But the Giants, in my opinion, are not there yet. They have to work on the interior offensive line. They have to work on the wide receivers. They have to work at the linebacker position. And then later in the process, you may tack on a good rotational edge guy like a Leonard Floyd. And I, I still think he's a starter. So I don't want to say he's a rotational guy that's kind of disrespectful to Leonard Floyd. But you get what I mean. The Giants at some point may be going after more rotational guys. Maybe it's next offseason. Maybe they do it this offseason. I don't know. All right. So off topic real quick. I want to go over that Bears and Panthers trade real quickly. So, of course, the Bears traded out of the number one pick. And they also were able to receive DJ Moore, wide receiver, who, of course, was kind of linked to the Giants at the trade deadline last year. The Giants did not make a trade, as we know, I mean, aside from the Kadarius Tony trade, of course. But Chicago also got the ninth overall pick, a second round pick this year, 61 overall, a first rounder for 2024, a second round pick in 2025, and DJ Moore, who of course was on a contract for $61 million over three years. So honestly, in my opinion, it's a great move by the Bears. I think the Bears were set up in such a great spot. Um, they lost the last game of the year, and I remember the Texans The Texans were about to lose the last game of the year and pretty much lock up the number one pick, and then something crazy happened in that game, and I think that the the Texans like missed on a Hail Mary or something, and the, the Colts won the game. So, I mean, just crazy way to miss out on the number one overall pick, and because of losing that game, 
the uh, Chicago Bears were able to make this trade and get a massive haul for the first overall pick and a, a quarterback draft. I mean, this is a good draft where you have C.J. Stroud, you have Bryce Young, you have Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. So the number one pick will be highly coveted. And of course, the Panthers, the past couple of years, it's been reported that they were looking to acquire Matthew Stafford before the Rams got him. They were also looking to acquire Deshaun Watson last offseason before the Browns got him. So now they're like, screw it. Let's get our quarterback. They tried the Sam Darnold route. They tried the Baker Mayfield route. They tried half of the 2018 draft class. They said this ain't enough for us, and they're going to try and get their guy. And it seems like it's C.J. Stroud. It's not 100%, you know, so far, but it seems like C.J. Stroud. I've seen some Anthony Richardson takes out there about going number one. It's very risky. I mean, Richardson is risky enough on his own, but to trade that many picks to get him, I mean, you would have to be very, very sure about your evaluation of Anthony Richardson. So I wouldn't mind it. You know, I'm a big Richardson fan, but I think Stroud is a much safer prospect. So that might be the route to go. We'll see. But it does bring me back to the 2018 draft. And like, I don't know why Dave Gettleman couldn't even take hauls to trade out of that pick because like, oh my God, that is such a great haul for a draft pick. But anyway, that's pretty much it for free agency stuff. I know Joe Shane had that that comment saying he wished he picked up the fifth year option on Daniel Jones. I mean, yeah, in hindsight, that would have been the right move. But at that time, I mean, look, Daniel Jones was coming off a neck injury. His last two years in the NFL were pretty garbage, to be honest. So I don't think anyone in their right mind would have picked up the Daniel Jones fifth year option. Of course, he came in this year and not only stayed healthy, but played very efficient, played very well. So it's not like Joe Shane can predict the future. So, you know, in, in like on the flip side, if Daniel Jones did not play well this year or got hurt this year, it would have been like very obvious not to pick up the fifth year option. But this year was just a great outcome for Daniel Jones and the Giants. But, you know, looking at the contract still, it's not a contract that, you know, I'm a huge fan of. I did prefer the franchise tag, as I said, but it is not the worst contract. That's something I also mentioned in the reaction video I had. It's a $19 million cap hit this year. Now it's 45 next year. So like a $45 million cap hit for 2024. That's a lot. And of course, it's $39 million in 2025. Now, the Giants, if they wanted to, they could get out of his contract after 2024 if this entire thing blows up. But you're going to be taking on dead money for sure. It's not like they can just wipe their hands completely clean. Like they will take on some dead money in 2025 if they, if they were to cut Daniel Jones or get rid of him or trade him, whatever. So, you know, people say like, yeah, you can get out of it after two years, but not completely clean. You're going to have some ramifications. You're going to have some dead cap, uh, some dead cap to take on. So that's the bad news. But yeah, you can technically get out of this thing after two years if it does fail. But with Daniel Jones, I don't think he will fail. I think Daniel Jones will be fine. I think he'll have a pretty good year next year. I would expect him to expand on what he did. I mean, he did have the 15 touchdowns. I expect him to get like 22, 23 next year, possibly. Um, the rushing yards may not be at 700, but maybe around 400, 500. Like, I think Daniel Jones will have a better year statistically next year. I do think the Giants will hopefully get him a receiver or two, whether it's in the draft or just free agency or whatever. So I think Jones will have a better year. I don't think the contract will be a complete you know, shit show, to be honest with you. I think he'll have a good year next year, um, but it depends how good. I mean, when you're paying a guy $40 million per year, you're expecting around like 30 total touchdowns or possibly more, and you're expecting a guy to, you know, pass the ball on every area of the field and not just throw short. And I mean, Daniel Jones, of course, had the lowest average depth of target for any quarterback last year. That's not a shot. It's just the it's just the facts. That was a stat. So um, the Giants will have to open up the field more next year. Hopefully, I I'm just tired of them playing conservative. So if they get the receivers next year, which I hope they do, that's the number one need right now, in my opinion. Hopefully, once they get these receivers, they will open up the field and really let Daniel Jones show us who he is. Because, you know, of course, this past year and even the past three years with him, there's been the built in excuse about not enough receivers and, and whatever. But if you get the receivers, I just want to see what he looks like. So I just want to see this team get an Odell Beckham or, you know, draft a guy or even get a couple receivers so we can finally find out without the speculation of who Daniel Jones really is. I mean, in the draft, you have Quentin Johnston. You're going to have Zay Flowers, possibly Jackson Smith, Najigba, Jordan Addison. Um, there's a chance the Giants can go for a, a Josh Downs or someone like that. 
I don't think I've watched Josh Downs yet, but I've seen the other guys I just mentioned. I remember liking Jordan Addison a lot. I think Addison might have had a slow 40 time. I want to check real quick. Yeah, Addison ran like a 4-5 or, or something, so it wasn't that great. But um, Addison, at least watching his highlights, like he was very impressive. So that's a guy I would be interested in. But I don't know, that 40 time is a bit sus. I don't know if he was just slow that day or if he was possibly hurt or just not a good 40 time runner. I don't know. There's a lot of different things. Zay Flowers too, another guy I'd be interested in. Of course, Jackson Smith and the Jigba. I'm not like a huge fan of his. I know people think like he's definitely the wide receiver one in this class and maybe he is, but when I watched him, I expected more. I don't know if that's like a knock or not, but I just was like expecting way more. He did not have enough like breakaway speed, the explosiveness I look for. He was hurt all of last year in 2022. So there are some red flags in my opinion with him, but he also could be like very, very good. So I don't know how to look at him, but I think he's a bit more risky than people may be leading on. But as I said, the Giants are looking for route runners, um, guys who get open. I mean, Quentin Johnston might not be that type of guy. He's kind of raw in a way. He has the 6'4", 215 frame. He's very good on the vertical route tree and things like that, but he might not be a guy who fits the Giants offense. I mean, Zay Flowers is probably like the best separator in this class honestly so that might be a guy they look at at a boston college only 5 10 170 so that might be a problem there but jordan addison is a good route runner he has you know he's ran every route in college basically six foot 175 so i don't know we'll find out what happens it might not even be a wide receiver we might be talking ourselves into a wide receiver but it might not even be a wide receiver in the first round they might go cam smith or joey porter jr i have no idea they might take the uh, osiris uh, guard out of out of florida you never know and even tight end i've seen tight end brought up too of course you know you have luke musgrave and dalton kincaid out of utah I've, i don't know i've seen I feel like I've seen some people connected with the Giants say, like, don't be surprised if they go tight end in the first round, which I don't know if they know something that we don't, but it's a possibility. Uh, we saw with Evan Ingram back in 2017, it was you know definitely a possibility that they would go Ingram or, you know, I think David Njoku was that year, OJ Howard, so they went with Ingram. Um, the Giants have done it before late in the first round, so we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really watched that much of the tight ends in this class, so I guess I'll get to that, but... I don't know. I think I'll be fine with a receiver. If you're going to take a tight end in the first round, like I want him to be like the whole package, like a guy that can block and receive and have some yards after catchability because that's a position that like you know, not not many tight ends go in the first round. You're not going to have that many of them. So if I'm taking one in the first round, I want him to be like a well-rounded player. So we'll find out if one even goes in the first round. I'm sure somebody will, but it depends on if the Giants want to go that route or not. But if you want to, you know, leave in the comments who you think the Giants are eyeing right now in the draft, then, you know, let me know. I'll definitely take a look. But anyway, I think that will do it for this video. I know I definitely freaked out about the Daniel Jones contract last video, but that was just my honest reaction. So it is what it is. But yeah, he's our quarterback now. And, you know, hopefully everything goes well. And hopefully the Giants, as I said, get him weapons and can, you know, show us who he is. Um, it is hard to completely buy in. As I mentioned, he had the lowest, you know, average depth of target last year. I think that Brian Dable put him in a very favorable position last year to take away the turnovers and, you know, find open receivers. And I do think the, you know, the weapons weren't great last year, but I think people give them too much shit. I think Richie James had a pretty good year last year, given the circumstances. Even Isaiah Hodgins was a great find. He might be a, a low-end wide receiver, too, one day. And even Darius Slayton's not that bad. I mean, we saw that Daniel Bellinger was open on those leak outs, and he would catch the ball and make some stuff happen after the catch. So, you know, listen, the guy does not have a wide receiver one, but I think sometimes we underrate how bad or overrate how bad the situation was. I think Brian Dable put him in a great spot last year. So now you have Dable. You have a great coach, one of the best play callers in football that understands the strengths and weaknesses of Daniel Jones. Now, can you get him a wide receiver one to make him even better? That's the wait and see. Um, I didn't even bring up the idea of trading for a Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins. <clears throat> that would probably take a lot. I mean, I think Ayuk might not feel the first round pick. I think you could probably get Ayuk for a second rounder and maybe like another like a fourth round or a second and a fourth for him. But T. Higgins might cost the first round. I think T. Higgins is looked at higher in the NFL as compared to Ayuk. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I do think the Giants will get somebody, though. I can't see a scenario where they go into next year and, like, their wide receiver one is Darius Slayton. So we'll find out what happens there. It's going to be interesting. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, the podcast, and I'll talk to you guys next time.